Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Dead Air Mojave 9. As you guys know, I'm pretty much Patreon exclusive. I still re release a video to YouTube occasionally, usually about one a month. Uh, but if you want to see it first, because uh, this review, this review of the Dead Air Mojave 9 has already been put up and seen on Patreon, or you want to see videos that are never going to make it to YouTube, which this, that's the majority of them. I'm putting out two, sometimes three videos a week over on Patreon versus maybe one video a month here on YouTube. If you don't want to come over and subscribe, that's cool too. Uh, no, no issues there, no issues whatsoever, but Patreon is where it's happening. Patreon is where it's going to keep happening. Uh, I'm not coming back to full-time YouTube or anything like that. That's just not going to happen. But I definitely want to you know, show my appreciation for you guys still supporting me here on the YouTube channel. So I want to drop the occasional video for you guys to check out what I'm doing and what I think about certain products. And this time we're talking about Dead Air's newest suppressor, the Mojave 9. So here we go. Did an initial impression on this one, and some of you guys brought it up in the comments, and it's definitely true, and I think we should open with it. Dead Air's reputation has recently taken a pretty big hit because of the way they handled the issues with the Sierra 5, the manufacturing issues, the failures that people were experiencing. I did a review on the Sierra 5, and it was fantastic. It, it's a good performing suppressor. It's got little niches here and there that I talked about in that video, but I have two CR5s. Well, I should say I have one right now. The other one's getting fixed because I experienced the same failure on that suppressor that a lot of the uh, people who bought them did, or some of the people who bought them did. I don't know what the actual failure number is, but it's high enough that everybody is aware of it. So going forward for Dead Air, they really kind of needed a win. And one of the first significant changes in, in their... Um, approach to suppressors has been the Mojave 9 is DMLS, Direct Metal Laser Centering 3D Printing. And I talked about that and showed you guys some of that in the uh, initial impression video. I'm getting more into it now. Uh, it's a 9mm suppressor. Of course, it's going to be calibrated rated for 9mm. The calibers in, 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 in that nothing bigger, obviously. 300 Black Subsonic um, and some of the more Wildcat or other calibers that are going to fit through it. I ran primarily 9mm and 300 Black Subsonic through the suppressor during the review process. It is a modular suppressor, which I talked about in the initial impression video, kind of just showing you guys here now. You see this with a lot of suppressors, and some people like it, some people can take it or leave it. You can change the length of the suppressor, which of course is going to change your decibel level. Swap out the end cap right there. It is hub compatible, so you can run a direct thread, a pistol booster, a three lug, whatever hub or dead air P series that you want to run, which is something that I really, uh, what really appeals to me because I don't want to have to run a booster and then take out the spring and put in a spacer if I want to run it on a direct thread where I don't need the booster functionality. Or if I wanted to run it on a handgun, say like a 2011 or Beretta, where I don't need the booster spring. So it's nice to have it be hub compatible. It's not some proprietary system. Um, I'm using Silencer Co, Dead Air, and a couple other compatibility parts on this that are hub compatible during the review process, that 2000 round review. Of course, it's full auto rated, uh, but the big thing is the is the the baffle design. It is a departure from Dead Air's traditional baffle design. It's a departure from traditional baffle design, and does that necessarily change anything? Well, the first thing you're going to notice with it, just based on the materials that are used, um, is there's some initial sparking. So, and this is something you see with from titanium, but you also see it from DMLS in general, but more so with titanium where your first 150, 200 rounds, you're going to notice a, a noticeable muzzle spark as you shoot the gun, especially in failing light or low light conditions. That does go away. In fact, at this point, after 2,000 rounds, it's just gone. Now I've just got traditional muzzle signature. But I wanted to kind of just highlight that throughout the review process. I try to shoot it as much in low light as possible, and also some night vision use, which we'll get to. Overall performance of the suppressor was fantastic. One of the things about suppressors that are handgun centric, especially 9mm suppressors, but pistol suppressors in general, is certain guns and certain suppressor relationships, they just don't like each other. They don't function well. For me, the Glock handgun has habitually been the most finicky when suppressed, regardless of what suppressor I was putting on it. Uh, I've got some suppressors that they'll run on a Glock, like a 17 or a 19, but I have to just pour grease into them, a like lithium grease or something similar to that, and it feels like every 50 or 60 rounds I'm having to reapply that. Now that being said, I don't shoot a lot of suppressed handgun because of the cumbersome nature of it. It doesn't holster well, doesn't carry well, it's not something I'm using outside of generally a range environment or some around the farm varmint control. Um, 
Primarily, my primary use for the Mojave 9 was on PCCs and submachine guns with some 300 Black, of course, thrown in there. And I ran it on MP5K, MP5, BNT, pretty much everything you guys are seeing in the, in the B-roll footage I'm showing you. And the functionality was fantastic. Like I said, I did have that initial sparking, but the overall performance of the suppressor was good in the full-size configuration. Of course, taking it down to the shorter configuration, you notice an immediate change at the ear of how the suppressor sounds. And this was kind of, and again, this is very subjective. Um, I have other suppressors that are similar to this where they're modular in design. You can take two or three baffles off of them and you don't really notice a significant change in the tone at the ear when you do that. With the Mojave, I did notice, I wouldn't say significant, but it was noticeable. It's still suppressed. It's still not gonna cause pain at the ear, which is one of the main reasons for a suppressor. But it was something where I'm like, hmm, that's strange. It was noticeable. It just isn't something that like made me want to like throw the suppressor away and go home. But, but I was kind of surprised that taking off that small of a length was causing something more noticeable than what I've noticed with other suppressors of similar design in the past. It's not a knock. It's just saying, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, in either configuration, suppressor performance was, was good. Uh, the muzzle signature getting into low light was fantastic. I wasn't noticing any significant issues, except for those at that initial, I guess you could call it a break-in period, where I had to put some rounds through it to where that sparking would go away. But shooting 115, 147, 124, um, some 165 super subsonic stuff, uh, performance was fantastic. The subsonic tone is great, uh, even on 300 Blackout. Sometimes with the um, smaller diameter pistol-centric suppressors, uh, even shooting 300 subsonic, which is what most of them are rated for. You don't see a lot of 9mm suppressors that are rated for 300 black supersonic. Um, generally, with the, those shorter diameters for those pistol-centric cans, uh, it's kind of like a compromise. Yeah, you're getting a, a shorter suppressor, uh, less diameter, and a lighter suppressor, but you're giving up some of that very comfortable subsonic report that you get otherwise with 300 blackout on larger pistol-centric cans. I didn't really notice that to be the case with the Mojave. Again, the tone is going to be a little bit more noticeable when you remove those baffles, but that just kind of makes sense because you're making the suppressor shorter. Uh, that being said, it functioned fine, no issues there. And again, because it's P, it's it's P or hub or P series compatible, changing out a muzzle device to run uh, like I did, uh, either a, a chemo system or direct thread, not going to be a factor. Uh, on a three lug, using the three lug system, everything was fantastic. It worked great. Direct thread pistol booster. Um, generally, I didn't have any functionality problems with the suppressor at all getting into that first thousand and getting into that last thousand rounds. And I wanted to run it really hard, so I spent a lot of time shooting it on my MP5s, both my full size and my K, and a lot of time on full auto. <clears throat> you guys know I stopped doing the burn down for personal reasons. Uh, it was getting to the point where, where, you know, I would have to take a day off from shooting after pulling the trigger 500 times. Uh, in three to four or four to five or five to six minutes. And in the history of the burn down, I hadn't really seen the burn down ever cause any really significant issues with, with, with anything, uh, except for like, you know, the, the occasional T and E suppressor or burn a slang or ruin a pair of pants with a hot suppressor or just get things really hot and catch fire. Um, so the burn down w went away, but that doesn't mean I'm still not going to run things hard. And of course, as you know, the burn down was kind of unrealistic. 500 rounds, as quickly as possible is usually outside the realm of reality for most firearms related firearms or firearms related accessories, muzzle devices, suppressors, optics, things of that nature. So no more burn down, but plenty of hard use. And uh, with some of the thinner wall or pistol centric suppressors, when you get them really hot, the tone changes dramatically. One, you start getting that snap, crackle, pop going on in the suppressor and the tone sounds louder and flatter. It's not as sharp, which is cool, but that 
that louder part is is going to be problematic. And and I've got some suppressors, pistol centric suppressors, some of the cheaper, the budget, the budget line type cans that you see out there. That once you get them hot, like noticeably hot, uh, the tone changes dramatically. So it's still useful to run them hard and see if that causes any changes. Um, the one thing to say about modular suppressors, and this is something that I wish more people were aware of, uh, if you're going to run a suppressor really, really hard, you need to take that off. Because the failure point in this system, it, once you get it really hot, and once you start running it really hard, is going to be those threads up front for that modular section that is removable. And obviously, make sure you're checking the thread tension on, our, on your attachment devices and your muzzle cap as well. So anytime I was going to run this thing like ridiculously, almost borderline stupid on full auto, like burning down drum magazines and just going through mag mag, because I do a lot of full auto practice, so that's going to get in there. And plus, you know, just for video's sake, I'll just burn a whole drum just for you guys. And um, I'd do it in full configuration, but once you get close to three, 400 rounds of just full auto shooting in a very short period of time, I'm not even talking two to three minutes, I'm talking like 20 to 30 minutes, it's probably advisable not to be running that full extension because those threads are taking a lot of abuse from that full auto use. So putting it in the short configuration, always a good idea. Although I did run it both ways, and the only noticeable difference is, of course, the decibel level at the ear, what you're hearing at the ear, taking away baffles versus not taking them away. Um, and that, that's pretty much the performance of the Mojave 9 has been fat, fantastic throughout the review process. Now, the, the muzzle report is interesting to me. Obviously, night vision is going to magnify that because that's what night vision does. But I was probably, I want to say like six, seven rounds into it when I started shooting under night vision. And it was not any more noticeable uh, than any other 9mm centric suppressor or even some rifle suppressors. So that sparking, while it went away visually for like daytime shooting and like like twilight and then low light shooting, shooting on night vision is obviously that big that big measure because it's going to magnify any available light that it can find. And um, really wasn't noticeable. Uh, so the sparking, I know that's a concern that some people have going forward. You hear people talk about it a lot where they'll shoot a can or they'll see somebody else shoot a can. And you don't know where it's at in its life cycle, and you may see the sparking, and that may just be something that's temporary, but of course you're only getting that snapshot of time of observation, so that person may have stopped having that problem in the next 100 rounds, and you weren't aware of it. So you just think it's going to spark like that the whole time, and that's necessarily definitely not the case with the Mojave 9 or any other suppressor I've really seen that does that. So 2,000 rounds into it, shooting a lot of 9mm, obviously, but also a lot of 300 subsonic, um, Mojave 9 has performed fantastically. And I think this is kind of like what Dead Air needed. Because they've done 9mm suppressor before. They did the Odessa, which is modular as well. You can take, you can really, you can really change the configuration on that one. It's one of those suppressors where you can take them off by baffle all the way down to a certain stack. So you can get really short or really long configuration. But the diameter on that suppressor is a lot thinner. Um, a lot less diameter, so it changes the, 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 the ability that the suppressor has to actually cool and suppress the gases before they exit to cause that explosive sound. Um, the Mojave 9 is more of a traditional diameter that you see from pistol-centric suppressors, and it's kind of modular. You can take off a couple baffles off the front, but you're not really able to play with the whole thing. Maybe that's something they'll do in the future. But it's nice to see Dead Air doing that, because prior to the Odessa, you had the Ghost and the Wolfman, and the Wolfman is more of a hard-use 9mm and 300 black suppressor. It's got a larger diameter, very similar in diameter to like a Sandman. And until the Sierra 5, everything was 30 cal. Uh, except for some variations that went a little bit larger. But your your mainstay suppressor from Dead Air has always been the Sandman, and it still is a fantastic suppressor. But I honestly think that the Mojave 9 might start to fill that niche for 9mm suppressors. It might become like the, the legacy mainstay suppressor for that particular caliber, because I do like the Odessa, but now that I have this, I don't think I'll be using the Odessa for anything anymore, right? unless it's just like I need an extra suppressor for whatever reason. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing on there from reaching for a dead air suppressor. As far as comparisons to other pistol suppressors, you guys know I don't really get into that. Uh, for you guys, Patreons, of course, I'm going to be doing a video in the future where we do talk about selecting a pistol suppressor, and we'll get into some compare and contrast in that video. But standing on its own merits, I think that this is a fantastic suppressor that can go a long way towards helping dead air fix that... Uh, perception issue they had with the quality control problems we had with the Sierra 5. Um, I want every suppressor to be good, and I want every company to do good things, and that isn't always necessarily the case. Um, and even though it's not really germane to 
the review on the Mojave 9. Um, I think it's relevant worth bringing up that like how companies handle issues with products definitely can hurt their reputation long term. So I would hate to see somebody not consider the suppressor just because a different suppressor had problems. That being said, this is a sample size of one. So don't just take my word for it. Seek out other reviews on it and kind of draw your own conclusions from those things. You know, verify before you trust. And of course, another caveat to this is I've had a long-standing relationship with Dead Air. I'm always objective as possible. I'm not compensated by Dead Air in any way, but they did send me this suppressor. So I didn't just, so there's always that chance that it was hand-picked. We always have to factor that into things. But I really don't see them doing that. Uh, especially considering with my Sierra 5, they sent me two of them. I reviewed one of them and it was fantastic. And the other one, as I talked to you guys in the beginning of the video, was the one that broke and I had to send it in still and got it back. So there's always that, the smug roll of the eyes that some people have. Well, it only does good because they gave it to you and they hand selected it, which is entirely possible. Uh, but I don't feel like that's the case. Certainly not the case with this suppressor. One negative thing that I did notice about the Mojave 9 kind of closing on this is the finish is kind of meh. Um, just using, um, changing out rear devices for attachments, going from like a P-series to like a three lug to a direct thread. Um, the coating is really starting to wear thin and chip in some places, and that's not something I like. Not a big deal, the suppressor is still gonna work, but that's something I would not like to see happen. And it's not an issue of me like, manhandling it or using vice grips or something like that. I have all the proper tools and wrenches and vices and straps and things I need to kind of work with the modularity of a suppressor. I think it's just a really thin coating. It probably could have stood to, to, to maybe, and it could just be an issue with this one suppressor. Um, so hopefully that's not a factor we start to see from other people's issues. It's kind of a nitpicky little thing, but a lot of people, you know, you pay six, seven, eight hundred dollars or more for a suppressor and then most of us have to wait six, eight, 10, 12, 18 months to get the damn thing. And I would hate to think that within the first 2000 rounds, you're already having finish issues. So if I have anything to, bad to say about the Mojave 9, that would be just the, the finish issue and it could be a sample size of one. Overall, fantastic suppressor. I'm really happy with it. And I'm probably gonna buy a second one because I really, I really do like it. Uh, and I'd like to take something, I, I really kind of have a need for a dedicated direct thread for 300 Black Subsonic, because I've got one 300 Black rifle that literally only ever shoots subsonic. And I think I'm just going to throw a Mojave 9 on that and just have that be the muzzle device. So if you're interested in the Mojave 9 and you're willing to give Dead Air another chance, um, I recommend it. I think it's a good suppressor. Till next time, everybody. Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.